It's such a hot day today. I wish I had a slushy to drink. Huh? Whoa! Oh my god! That's so cool! How did you do that? Yeah, it froze instantly. Hello everyone, my name is Ikwan Hazid and I am the group leader of the Unknown Quantities and here are my team members. So today, we're going to talk about supercooling or more specifically nucleation and what it is and how it happens and its practical applications and natural occurrences in real life. Alright, let's go! We all know that water has a freezing point of 0 degrees Celsius. However, did you know that water doesn't always freeze when it's supposed to? This is because liquids are subject to a phenomenon known as supercooling. In a supercooled state, a liquid remains a liquid even when it's below its freezing point. Now why does this happen? It has to do with the amount of energy in the water molecules. In a liquid state, the water molecules start moving around slowly and forms loose bonds with each other. For a liquid to turn into a solid, it needs two things. Low energy, which can be achieved through cooling, and intermolecular bonds, which starts from the nucleus. This nucleus is where the water starts freezing, pro freezing from and is also known as a nucleation site. When the nucleation site is absent, the water has no place to start solidifying and thus enters into a supercooled state. However, when the water is agitated or shaped, some of the water molecules will, will slot in next to each other and act as a nucleation site. This causes the freezing process to occur. Now, time for the experiment. This is how we do it. Firstly, shake the bottle vigorously before putting it in the freezer. Make sure the bottle is in a position where it will not move around. Now, we wait for 3 to 4 hours. Next, take the bottle out carefully without shaking it or agitating it around too much. Now, it's the moment of truth. Pour it out onto a cold steel bowl. And watch the eyes grow and form just like that. Isn't that cool? What's actually going on here? When the cool water hits the bowl, it instantly turns into ice due to it being below the freezing point. This process is known as nucleation. Now, it's the moment of truth. We hit it on the table and watch the water turn to ice immediately. Isn't that amazing? Now, for the salt water. Wow! Okay, so for our experiment, we have put carbonated, salt, and plain water inside the freezer for roughly 3 hours. Then, we pour each of the water onto a cool bowl. From our observation, all type of water, the carbonated, plain, and salt water freezes instantly when it comes into contact with the cool bowl. Now, what is the relationship between supercooling and the type of liquids and does all liquids get supercooled? To answer those questions, we have to see the result of the experiment. As we have seen, all type of liquids that have been used manage to undergo the supercooling process. From generally speaking, it means that all liquids could be supercooled. The only thing that differs between them is the required amount of energy to supercool each liquid. For an example, carbonated water uses more energy to supercool compared to plain water. As the freezing point of carbonated water is lower at negative 10 degrees Celsius. However, with enough energy and the right equipment, you could supercool just about any liquid. That's all from our little experiment today. And you can also try out this experiment for yourself. So, what can you do with supercooling? Among the application of supercooling is in the food industry. Supercooling helps keep the food fresh even for a long time. Another place where supercooling is used is in the production of superconductors. It is possible to supercool metals way beyond their freezing point, which is essential in the, in the manufacturing of superconductor. And those, those are all the real life application of supercooling. And that concludes our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it. And remember, keep learning. Assalamu alaikum.